Welcome back to what is a very backwards day. Uh, it, so, really, you know, because the games were on early this morning and then there was the Super Bowl, so I was watching that. Uh, other video ideas I had for, for today, I had to save for tonight, where I usually am doing a review. And I'm going to talk about the career of Shane Corson. So I was looking through the, the highest penalty minute getters in NHL history. And in terms of penalty minutes, Corson was 29th. The interesting thing is, he's a power forward, really. He's drafted 8th overall in 1984. Uh, takes a little while for him to come in. The Montreal Canadiens weren't really about rushing players, so they didn't. Uh, 1986, or 85-86, I should say, plays three games with Montreal. No points, he records two penalty minutes. This is one of those careers where I have to track penalty minutes. I have to. Uh, Corson could fight. Uh, he was... He was borderline. What's interesting is that I, being a Bruins fan in the 80s, learned to not like Corson for the same reasons that if you were a Montreal fan, you would have loved him. So there was that that separation there, right? 86-87 is rookie year, 55 games, 12 goals, 11 assists, 23 points. 144 penalty minutes. 86-87 is also a year Montreal goes on a nice long run in the playoffs. 17 games, 5 goals, 6 assists, 11 points. 30 penalty minutes. Sadly for Corson, the 85-86 season, though, he didn't make his debut in the playoffs, so he doesn't get a Stanley Cup ring. That was the last time that Montreal won a cup before he joined. 87-88, uh, he plays 71 games that year, 12 goals, 27 assists, 39 points, 152 penalty minutes. So again, uh, drops the gloves, plays a tough game, able to hit. Uh, he could kind of do a little bit of everything. The goal scoring... Wasn't quite where it was going to end up, though. In the playoffs, he just plays the three games, one goal, and uh, 12 penalty minutes. Do believe that was the year that Andy Moog uh, took care of the Montreal Canadiens. 88-89, uh, they would they would get their revenge on Boston that year, I do believe. They they met Boston seven years in a row. Uh, so I, I got to really not like the Montreal Canadiens players back then. Uh, 80 games played that year, and his, his offense really shows up. 26 goals, 34 assists, 60 points. 193 penalty minutes so not only is he scoring more points and getting more goals but now he's spending about three games in the penalty box altogether uh in the playoffs 21 games they go to the stanley cup final great final that year with the calgary flames four goals five assists nine points 65 penalty minutes in the playoffs he was not shy about dropping the gloves if he needed to in the playoffs either uh 89 90 one of his best statistical seasons, 76 games, 31 goals, 44 assists, 75 points. He goes to the All-Star game for the first time in his career that year as well. Uh, in the playoffs, 11 games, 2 goals, 8 assists, 10 points, 20 penalty minutes. So his penalty minutes, uh, still pretty high. The 144 in the regular season, 20 in the postseason. Uh, he's not shy. Not a shy player at all. 90-91. Uh, 71 games, 23 goals, 24 assists, 47 points. So his points totals come down, his goals come down, his assists drop by 20. Penalty minutes, 138. In the playoffs, 13 games, 9 goals, 6 assists, 15 points. Very good production in the playoffs, and 36 penalty minutes. So again, not shy about getting his penalty minutes in the playoffs at all. 91-92, what would be his final year in Montreal? 64 games, 17 goals, 36 assists, 53 points. So his, his points come up, his goals come down a bit, but he played 7 less games, 118 penalty minutes. In the playoffs, 10 games, 2 goals, 5 assists, 7 points, 15 penalty minutes. Montreal hadn't had a Stanley Cup in 6 years, which was an eternity back then. Montreal fans now wouldn't understand. I don't, well, the younger fans, would know, the older fans would know how that is. You go more than 4 years without a Stanley Cup in Montreal and people are asking for, for heads on plates. You Like, it was, it was brutal. Uh, and August 27th, he's traded out of Montreal to Edmonton along with Brent Gilchrist and Vladimir Wojtek. Vladimir Wojtek was one of those players that had the talent. I'm, I'm still not sure what happened there. Uh, and, he, and in exchange, they get back a 1993 fourth round pick and Vinny Domfus. So Vinny Domfus goes to Montreal. And in 1993, Montreal wins the Stanley Cup. Problem is Shane Corson's going to Edmonton. Edmonton's going through its dysfunction after their dynasty is done. Uh, he plays that first year, 80 games, 16 goals, 31 assists, 47 points. 209 penalty minutes so he goes above 200 penalty minutes and again he's providing them with goals points he's he's giving them that toughness that uh that power forward type numbers right 93 94 he only plays 64 games that year 25 goals 29 assists 54 points 118 penalty minutes and 
as an Oiler, he goes to the All-Star game that year. So again, the Oilers, it's downtime for them. They're not a playoff team, but Corson's playing well. The lockout shortened season of 94-95, 48 games, 12 goals, 24 assists, 36 points, 86 penalty minutes. Coach George Burnett uh, gives him the captaincy and then took it away from him. So it's one of those situations where a player gets stripped of the captaincy. Sometimes the player sticks around. Usually they don't. Usually if a player gets stripped of the captaincy, that means something's gone wrong somewhere. There's a dysfunction somewhere, and they're probably going to be on their way out of town. So on July 28th of 90, 95, or 96, no, 95, uh, he signs as, as a free agent with the St. Louis Blues. He got to have compensation. He's a young player. By today's standards, no. By today's standards, this is not something you'd need compensation for. The compensation going to Edmonton from St. Louis, Cujo. Yeah. Uh, so they they get they bring him in. Uh, they lose Cujo in exchange for getting him. And uh, that's, that's one that I think the Oilers probably come out ahead in, right? So 95-96 in his first year in St. Louis. His only full season was St. Louis. 77 games, 18 goals, 28 assists, 46 points. 192 penalty minutes really really high penalty minute totals in the playoffs 13 games eight goals six assists 14 points and 22 penalty minutes so the blues had these visions of what they might be able to do in the 96 playoffs and in the end it it doesn't quite get there which was the storyline for st louis until basically until 2019 so 96 97 he plays 11 games with st louis at the start of the season two goals one assist three points 24 penalty minutes he proves you can go home again. On October 29th, he's traded with a 1997 fifth round pick and Murray Barron in exchange for Craig Conroy, Rory Fitzpatrick, vote for Rory, and Pierre Turgeon. So he's back in Montreal. And it, it's not quite the scoring uh, frenzy for him that you would have seen before. 47 games after the trade, six goals, 15 assists, 21 points, 80 penalty minutes. Uh, in the playoffs, just the five games played, one goal and four penalty minutes. So not a great season. However, the following year, he gets back to form. Only plays 62 games in 97-98, but he has 21 goals, 34 assists, 55 points, 108 penalty minutes. So the penalty minutes come down. Don't worry, they're going to go back up. And he plays in the All-Star game that year. So that's his third and final appearance in the All-Star game, twice as a Hab, once as an Oiler. In the playoffs, 10 games, three goals, six assists, nine points. 26 penalty minutes again and and we look at penalty minutes now and if a guy's got 100 we talk about hey this guy's got 100 penalty minutes this year that's a lot uh but yeah uh it, it is by by the standards of what we had in the league 20 30 years ago not that high uh 98 99 63 games 12 goals 20 assists 32 points 147 penalty minutes as his scoring goes down uh 99 2000 it drops again uh, 70 games, 8 goals, 20 assists, 28 points, 115 penalty minutes. Things are dysfunctional in Montreal after the trade of Patrick Waugh, right? And they don't really get back to where they'd like to be. So uh, Corson goes to the free agent market. July 4th, he signs as a UFA with Toronto. He didn't play that long in Toronto. The funny thing is that, I mean, I'm wearing Montreal because that's where he spent most of his career. It feels like he played in Toronto a lot longer than he did. Uh, 77 games in 2000-2001, 8 goals, 18 assists, 26 points, 189 penalty minutes. It's the only time he cracks the top 10 in penalty minutes. He was 10th that year. In the playoffs, 11 games, 1 goal, 1 assist, 2 points, 14 penalty minutes. And so, yeah, that's the first of three years. The second year, 2001-2002, 74 games, 12 goals, 21 assists, 33 points, 120 penalty minutes. In the playoffs, 19 games, 1 goal, 6 assists, 7 points, and 33 penalty minutes. Now, I can't prove that he's watched Happy Gilmore, but when he was being separated from Eric Cairns after they'd had a fight, uh, he kicked at him. He tried to kick him, so he gets suspended for Game 7 against the New York Islanders that year. So just one of those things that eh, happens. Every now and then you'll try to kick at somebody or take off your skate and try to stab somebody. So 2002-2003, he didn't do that. 2002-2003, his final year in Toronto... He only plays the 46 games. He resigns during the season. Seven goals, eight assists, 15 points, 49 penalty minutes. He did play in the playoffs, just the two games, two penalty minutes. And what happened was ulcerative colitis shortened his season. So he starts to suffer more with that, and it's affecting his game. And that can be debilitating. That's a, that's a condition that can absolutely be debilitating. So he, he kind of retires, right? He's kind of done. 
February 18th of 2004, the Dallas Stars bring him out of retirement, essentially. He plays 17 games in Dallas, 5 goals, 5 assists, 10 points. That's not bad in the 29 penalty minutes. He does play 5 games in the playoffs, uh, records 1 assist in 12 penalty minutes, and then he retires after that. That's where his career comes to an end. And he revealed in an interview, uh, I think it was in 2001 to Sports Illustrated, that he had suffered from panic attacks. Uh, and, and panic attacks can be debilitating too. Um, I, I know I, I used to go through them a lot and they can absolutely just ruin the rest of your day. So ulcerative colitis, panic attacks, really remarkable that he played through some of this stuff. He ends up retiring with 1,156 games played. Very good, long career. 273 goals, 420 assists for 693 points. So almost 700. 2,357 penalty minutes, which is 29th on the overall list. Uh, in the playoffs, 140 games, 38 goals, 49 assists, 87 points. 291 penalty minutes in his career in the playoffs. Uh, he also was a winner on the international stage. 1994, he won gold at the World Championships. 1991, he won Canada Cup gold. So he's part of Can Team Canada at the Canada Cup. And in 1985, he won gold at the World Juniors. 1986, he won silver at the World Junior Championships. So he was part of, of championships, just not a Stanley Cup. And again, it was just timing, right? He he didn't get to play in the playoffs in 86 when they go to the, the Stanley Cup and win it. Uh, he's traded the year before Montreal wins their next cup, and he joins the Oilers three years after they lost, um, or three years after they won their last Stanley Cup, and then he's in St. Louis decades before they won his championship. And Toronto, uh, I won't say with Toronto, uh, and with Dallas, he was he was a few years after Dallas won a cup too. So nice long career for Shane Corson, decent number one draft pick, and again as a Boston fan. I couldn't stand him a lot at the time, but I had to respect his game. And uh, yeah, it was a very long career and uh, Montreal Canadian. But uh, he does have a connection to Darcy Tucker, who he played with in Toronto, in that his sister married Darcy Tucker. And when he was going through a lot of the 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 things he was going through late in his career, it was Darcy Tucker that he, he leaned on and relied on. So a good story there. And uh, yeah, I thought it might be interesting to do for a career video because played a long time. There you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.